What's good, everybody? Uh, appreciate you joining 99 Miles Per Hour, uh, the podcast with your host, me, Percy Garner. Uh, we got a special guest, but we're going to get to him later because he ain't that important. I'm playing, I'm playing. <laughs> but a few things I need to go through. Um, so I've been looking. At the analytics on YouTube And all the people that be watching this podcast on YouTube Y'all ain't subscribed So I'm gonna look y'all deep in y'all eye sockets 76% of y'all who watch this these uh, podcasts on YouTube ain't subscribed So uh, it's free Click that button, ring the bell So you know when we go live again Actually we ain't live yet But we, we gonna be doing that soon As soon as the guests let us this, The guests be scared But And then on uh, iTunes uh, most of most of our you know, listeners listen on iTunes. If y'all could leave a five star rating with a review, and then I'll read it live next episode. Appreciate that. But uh, we also need you to go visit getlevelpod.com and you can check out other podcasts on this network as well as uh, the Get Level Pod store uh, from Teespring. Some nice dope gear on there. You know what I'm saying? 99 miles per hour. If you like the Cleveland Browns, they got some stuff on there too. I ain't a Browns fan, so that's whatever. But let's get to the let's get to the guess. So we got uh, X, Ohio State Buckeye. Now I ain't no Buckeye fan, but I like the chocolate and peanut butter Buckeye, so we gonna roll with that. We also he also was a a Canton South native who lost to Dover in two thousand six. No, <laughs> and he also was drafted in the 16th round in 2007 straight out of high school by the Houston Astros and he's glad he ain't a part of that team right now <laughs> but no um he's uh, he's known as in in the Stark County area and all of Ohio as uh, you know one of the best athletes that uh, to come out of this area and i in my opinion he is the best athlete i've ever seen in person uh, as we grew up playing little league baseball together and uh, on through high school. And uh, one of the hardest working individuals, this man is still in shape. We the same age, and y'all can tell by the camera who's actually still caring about their body. <laughs> but I got here in front of me none other than the Devon Torrance. D- Devon Montreal Torrance. What's up? What's up, man? How you feeling? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me down here, man. I'm like I'm excited about what you're doing, man. I, I think it. I think this is great. So yeah, it's fun, man. Here. We gonna we gonna get you on here a couple times. You know, hopefully this this podcast got longevity. You know, what I'm saying hopefully people don't get tired of me. But Josh, he got some stuff going on, so he'll keep him interested, right, Josh? <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, he ain't got no mic now. I'm used to having him having a mic. Um, but no, man, I appreciate having you on the show. Appreciate you driving down from Canton. I know you busy. You know, um, but we're going to get to some things. But I just, you know, where you at right now? Like, you know, people that probably follow you on social media, you know, they see you posted up in your photos looking all <laughs> GQ. But, uh, you know, just tell us about what you got going on right now. Uh, man, i um, still playing baseball. You know, I'm doing the independent route right now. So just staying in shape for that. Uh, for y'all to know that's still professional baseball. You're just not affiliated with a, with a major league team right now. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's still AAA, major league baseball. Um, they consider it 4A. Um, you know, just that, man, working out, staying in shape, um, you know, looking for some other opportunities as far as, you know, business, real estate, stuff like that. Um, just seeing what I really want to get my hands into. Um, you know, just, you know, family, you know, just the, you know, typical stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, once I, <laughs> once I got kicked to the curb by the Orioles, <laughs> I was like looking like, all right, what's, what's good next? <laughs> yeah. And, and that's a challenge, you know, for more, for, for us athletes, once we get out of that arena, but you ain't totally out of there yet. Um, but how has like COVID affected that? I know you had re-signed, uh, with your team and then, Obviously, that probably got halted. I don't know. Are they still? Are you still going to play this year, or how's that working? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously, you know, you look around, and everybody's trying to get some bit of a season in, and you know, I think that was the original plan for us going in was to, you know, try and get you know eighty to a hundred games in. But you know, unfortunately, my league, which was the Atlantic League, they ended up banging the whole season, um, wow. like at the last minute. So you know, it was pretty unfortunate. But right now, I'm working on being traded. 
um, to another team to uh, play for this uh, play for the summer. So okay, you know we'll see. I'm supposed to hear back on that here in the next couple of weeks. So man, you know, like I said, I was around the corner at Dumas trying to get some, <laughs> get some bats to hit with, man, just to make sure I'm you know I'm ready to go. But uh, you know, it's definitely affected it, man. It, you know, it weighs on you, especially for me because. You know, last year was, you know, really my first season of full professional baseball. Yeah. And so it was like, you know, I had finally like settled into that. Like, man, like I'm really about them getting to give this a shot, even though it's later. You know, I'm, I get to give this legitimate shot. And for then this to happen, it's kind of like the uh, 2011 NFL lockout for me all, all over uh, again. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? So, you know, it's one of those things where back then I had to just wait and stay in shape. You know, I was at the track 24-7. Um, and, you know, just trying to like, you know, keep your, your mental mind frame together, yeah. you know? So, you know, it's the same thing right now. Um, but like I said, man, I'm trying to get some other things going, you know, just to, you know, so I'm just not always thinking about and focusing on baseball. I mean, you can only hit and work out so much yeah. until, <laughs> until you're like, dude, like I got to go do something else. So. Yeah. 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 No, I get it. I get it. I mean, and, and those are the type of things you don't think about. So in the 2011 lockout, you know, all the dudes that had their contracts and stuff, obviously they wanted to play. But, you know, they kind of sitting pretty like, well, you know, I still got some millions, you right. know, I'm tripping. But uh, for like a lot of those people like yourself and people who are fighting for a job and, and trying to get their career, you know, jump started, you know, stuff like that kind of hinders it. Just like these students, you know, the student athletes, the high schoolers, the college players right now are going through yeah. some. I, I don't know what I would do, man, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough on everybody, man. Um, yeah. I have a, a cousin. And, you know, he was calling me and, you know, man, should I go ahead and commit now? You know, I don't want him to pull the scholarship. Oh, yeah. So, you know, everybody's wheels are turning, man. And this, you know, this COVID stuff is just, it's just really tough, man. But, you know, hopefully, you know, we'll come out of it, you know, okay, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the one thing that's came, that I've noticed for myself that's come through, uh, through COVID and for a lot of businesses I work with is, you know, a lot, it, it forced people out of their shell a little bit. Like my church now is live streaming. Uh, a lot of people are realizing how much work can be done from home. And, yeah. um, and for me, I don't know if, the, if, if COVID never happened, I don't know if this podcast would exist to right, be honest. Right, um, yeah. you know, Josh kind of give me a swift kick in the butt and like, let's roll. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I mean, I, there is a couple good things, but most of the time, like, you know, students graduation from high school, stuff like that. It's just been, it's been rough, but I mean, and then this, obviously we got other stuff going on in the yeah, world. Yeah. Um, you know, you ain't got to be, give me a super political answer, but just like, what's your thoughts and just feelings on, you know, just so, well, before you answer that, I've been watching a lot of, of videos of celebrities and athletes talk about, uh, racism and stuff like that. And a lot of them, obviously we get a pass sometimes just because of being an athlete yeah. and being well known. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them, they, they might not experience it like a, um, I guess, a, a person that's not an athlete or, or famous or whatever. But some of them said, you know what, they only think it exists because we talk about it. So if they, they're like, you know, if we just didn't talk about it, I think it was Morgan Freeman that said that. He's like, I, I think it would just go away. But since we always, you know, we, we bring it up and we, you know, we give it all this weight and the media focuses on it and stuff like that. He thinks it gives it weight. And then I've heard other people just like, you know what? I mean, I've made it this far. You know, I, I think everybody's got an equal chance. And then we're like, come on, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah. just what are your thoughts? Um, I know it's a tough I'm, one. To <laughs> I'm, well, I'm, 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 I'm thinking about, you know, what you said that, you know, Morgan Freeman said. Um, that could be some truth to that. Some truth. But, you know, I think... Uh, you know, it's kind of like one of those out of sight, out of mind things, maybe. Yeah. Maybe somewhere in there. But, you know, I think he's Morgan Freeman. <laughs> yeah. You know, so you, you kind of have to really sit and think about, you know, where he's coming from with that. Um, but, you know, in my opinion, man, I think, you know, obviously with, you know, the police brutality and stuff like that, man, you know, that that is an issue, you know, yeah. and we really do need to adjust that, you know, and not all cops are bad at no, all, man. Yeah, I know yeah. some great cops, you know, yep, yep, me too. you know, and just like, you know, not all black people are bad, you yeah. know, and. You know, you and I, we, we, we are outliers, yeah. you know, because, you know, we're uh, professional athletes, you know, we, we know how to carry ourselves in the community, you know what I mean? And we've been brought up a different way, you know, True. than a lot of other people have. And, you know, people who, you know, may view, you know, other people from, you know, inner city, just wherever, yeah. view them a different way. And, you know, it's kind of one of those things, 
where in my opinion, I think, you know, these movements and, you know, these protests is bringing a lot of awareness and people are beginning to understand like, hey, you know, there are some issues, you know, that we do need to adjust, you yeah. know, and everybody's not racist. No, I don't no. I don't think that at all. Yeah, true. You know, but there are some things that are going on that we, we need to adjust and we need to figure out, you know, as, you know, just being human beings, you know, in order to. To, to, to get better, you know, yeah. none of us are perfect, you know, the world's not perfect, you know, but I think that, you know, for me, it goes back to, you know, my faith and, you know, my relationship with God that, you know, everybody's, you know, essential, you know, their, their main thing to do here while you're on earth is to make it a better place. And you start by doing that with with the people, yep. you know, because without I like you know, us, you know, we're nothing like yeah. being on earth by yourself would be what suck. You know, yeah. what makes life worth, well, you know, living is that you have family, you have friends, there's other cultures you can, you know, you can pull from, you can learn about this, this people, you know, these other people. And, you know, that's what makes us great. And I think that's one of the things that makes America great. But in order for us to fully, you know, you know, take those steps and to get better and understand each other more, these unfortunately these issues come up yeah and we need to deal with them um you know but like i said i think a lot of awareness is being brought to people on you know systemic racism and things like that um you know and i think us as a you know a uh uh being african-american you know we're obviously behind the eight ball you know i think that's pretty clear you know i think we need to you know really pull together our resources and you know help help mm. one another and, you know, my brother's a pastor down in Columbus and, you know, he does a lot of thing in the community. And, you know, um, he talks about, you know, from an economic standpoint, you know, pulling the resources together and helping each other out and doing things like that, man. So, you know, I think that's one of the most important things that we can do right now is, you know, keep digging, be yeah. there for one another, you know, and, you know, really trust each other. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's you touched on what I saw another clip, which I didn't mention. And you just brought it to my attention was. Denzel. Denzel said, look, there, there, there's obviously issues in the system, but the biggest, uh, I think, detriment he says with our African-American people is we're growing up with no fathers. Yeah, absolutely. And luckily I had a father, but a lot of people, you know, didn't. I mean, I don't know what your experience was. I know you had, um, you have a stepdad. Yeah, I had a stepdad, Joe, Joe but Joe, yeah. But, um, most of the time, people aren't growing up with a father, and no matter what, obviously, no fathers are perfect. I watched um, a Father's Day episode of Will Smith and Jada, and they were talking about, you know, his dad, all his flaws, how he used to beat his mom and stuff like that, but he was a phenomenal teacher, and he taught Will a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. and Denzel was like, look, all, like, he didn't name any stats. I've seen stats, but, like, back in the 70s, like, <laughs> it was like, I want to say 70 to 80% black homes had two parents yeah. now it's like it's in the teens or 20 percent. so it's like you don't have that role model moms can't do it by themselves they need to provide and stuff as well and he also said the fact that you know that they give us you know money or something if you have a single family home they kind of reward you with cash if yeah. you you know but that's a whole nother thing that i don't really want to get into right yeah, now yeah, yeah but but no i i respect that opinion and and i agree with a lot of points you made but I mean, it's just it's just something we we do. Uh, all we got to do is just love each other, and that's one of my favorite shirts I usually wear on the on the on the show. Is all we need is love, or all you need is love. And uh, I think um, I think that's the key, man. It's just meeting people. You know, uh, you remember Aaron Tompkins, right? Yeah. So I was with his dad. You know, um, you know, just recently. Put, yeah, and oh, okay. I was I was I was talking to him and about everything going on, man. He said, you know, one of the things that uh, we we don't do and we fail to realize is that we got to meet people where they are, you know? And mm. what, Wait, what said, does he mean by that? You know, it's just like, everybody's not educated, you know, yeah. like you were just talking about, everybody doesn't have a, you know, a father figure. So, you know, everybody's coming from different circumstances. So when you, when I think what he meant, how I took it was, you know, when you look at people and you see their situation, have more compassion you know, for what that person's going through, where that person is in their life. And I think if we do that, you know, that is a major key to helping people get better, you know. And I look at, you know, Martin, like your yeah, dad Martin, was, yeah. you know, you know, wasn't around, not because, you know, he wasn't a bad dad or whatever, but, you know, my father wasn't around. Yeah. You know, he just up and left. You know, I didn't get in contact back with him until I was 27 years old. So for me, you know, Martin being around and, picking me up to go to the games yeah. and stuff like that. You know, he met me where I was at and he helped, 
propel me, you know, to the young man that I am. Yeah, he never Come, talked down to you. He just treated down, you like, you know. Treated me like I was his own son. I go stay night at his house. I got to see how, you know, uh, I guess, you know, a middle class family, yeah. you know, function with having both black parents in the household. Yeah. I got to see how he spoke to his wife, how he handled this situation, how he, you know, when the pressure was. I got to see that. So for me, that's meet me where I was at. And that's just that, you know, certain situation. But, you know, as far as racism and, you know, business, just, you know, just we got to meet each other where we're at. And I think if we do that, man, like. We'll be able to help each other, and, you know, and you know, turn out to be a better society. You know, like in my that. opinion, so. I like that. Yeah, Martin, good Martin. dude, man. Yeah, he great is a good dude. dude, great dude. Yeah. Twenty one else, boys. Let's get the first one. <laughs> hey, remember you used to scare me? You throw a pitch, pitch. I'm like, bam. <laughs> man, Martin, man, love that dude, and and he he. I mean, he was probably aware of the impact he was making, but a lot of times, like his parents, you don't realize yeah. what your like kids see. And just the fact that you were talking about how he spoke to his wife and just how he did little things, you you know. Yeah, he didn't realize that I was paying attention to Uh, that, you know. So So, that's what's up. That's what's up. Um, Now, you know, I guess less pressing matters, but stuff that Americans love and that sports. We going we gonna (laughs) transition into that now. Do it. Um, Like I said, obviously, you're one of the best athletes I've ever seen in person. I think I can remember is one of the things I always told when I. We'll talk about you to the people who didn't know you. Um, this was when we were younger. Um, I was like, man, Devon is crazy athlete. You like, he's barely faster than me. No, I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say like, man, like I just seen this man just like like a ball's hit over the fence. He was just run and just straight up jump over the fence to go get the ball. Like, <laughs> which is just dumb stuff like that. Where you're like, what are you doing? And uh, you know, it's almost like those Bo Jackson stories. <laughs> And like Describe to me like Did you always Was it your mom Wanda Or like who instilled Work ethic in you Because I remember When we left Ohio Thunder And Ohio Thunder If y'all didn't know Was like the best team Ever created In Ohio they really that. They really <laughs> Like we were What like 14 We played together What 14 to 16 year olds Well we played from 12 But yeah. Ohio Thunder I think it was when we were 14 to 16 And we were playing In 17 18 year old leagues And winning them Um, But like the the attitude and the swagger we had on that team. Well, we had Derek Dietrich on the team, Camden Carter, Gil, Ken Schmucker, Schmucker, Justin Gill, um, and just some, you know, there's a lot of people. Brian Barrett. Yeah, man, if we yeah. ain't name y'all, don't mean you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> we still love all y'all, but um, just like that team we had, and the coach we had was like Coach Harrison and and Martin there. And just all the guys we had, we were a good bunch of kids. Like, we weren't, you know, trying to get no trouble, you know, no matter what we did in embassy suites and oh, stuff man. like that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, just that work ethic you had, like, once, once we left that team, you, like, I don't know, I think, didn't you, like, build a cage or whatever and you, <laughs> at your house somehow, like, makeshift so you can learn to switch hit? And, mm-hmm. like, I, at first I was like, man, Devon is nuts. <laughs> yeah, everybody was. Everybody was. But, man. I mean, and then next thing you know, I think we scrimmaged you. I don't know if it was junior or senior year in baseball. And I'm telling the whole squad, like, oh, he just started hitting left-handed. He's going to be trash. Don't worry about it. Then you hit a home run. I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, I don't either, but I, was, I think that was, like, my first at-bat live For lefty, but I swear to you. And I hit that. It was that, a good picture, bro, too. It was bro. Chris Aldergate. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know how that happened. Bro. I mean, the fence in right field was only two ninety. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I wasn't gonna mention that. It but. wasn't like I, it wasn't like I got all of it. But I mean, I, I got you'll the, take it. Yeah, yeah. right. You know? But uh, just describe where you think you got it from. I mean, I'm assuming it was your mom, but um, absolutely, man. Uh, my mom and uh, my older brother. I think from um, my mom's standpoint, man. Uh, really, really, her drive um, is what I think I got. I get from her. You know, and right now she, you can't get her to slow down. You know, I'm like, mom, you got to chill. She's like, no, I got to go do this. this. <laughs> but, you know, man, she's a very driven woman. And for me, you know, growing up, she wasn't always like the type of mom that was like, you know, hugs and kisses and yeah, yeah. stuff like that. You know, she, well, I mean, she, if you, you didn't have the father figure, exactly. so she had to kind of be both. Yeah. So she was always up getting after it. And, you know, I remember when, you know, we moved back from Germany, you know, um, I was living over there till I was about eight or nine years old. And, you know, we had a. Uh, Got in this apartment. I didn't even know that. Yeah, got, <laughs> we had gotten this apartment over on the northeast end of Canton, man. You know, a little duplex, um, middle of the hood. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we moved in there and, you know, she had, I remember it. She was like, you know, I'm going to go to nursing school. 
And I, you know, I'm a kid. I don't, I'm not thinking about nothing. But what I saw her do, man, and I think she was about maybe 36 at the time. You know, for a 36, you know, year old woman um, uh, with three kids, three young kids to put herself through nursing school and to see how she did it. You know, I look at anything that I go through now and it's like, man, like, come on, bro, yeah. this woman, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, went through all of that with three kids, putting herself through nursing school. Like, you know, I, I think she said we were making like five thousand dollars a year, Dang. you know, living on that. Um, but, you know, I remember days where she would come home. And we didn't couldn't afford a computer. She would have a typewriter, and she'd be in the basement on her typewriter, and I just sit at the top of the steps, and I just watch it. She'd be <laughs> going on this typewriter, man, and you know studying the note cards, and she, you know, That's on crazy. the way to her class, she would, you know, Devon read this question to me, and you know, so it was like we did that together, and I seen her go through that, you know, it was organic, man, and it was just like, you know, I seen the strongest woman I've ever seen in my life, and man, I love her. For, you know, placing that spirit of determination and not letting age, not letting nothing get in her way. And that's one of the reasons I, you know, I'm continuing to play baseball now. Because if she can go back to nursing school at 36 and get a uh, job to create a better life for me, like, I can do this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then next, man, it's, uh, you know, my older brother, Julius. You know, he was pretty hard on me growing up, you know, from a standpoint of, my mentality of like having that dog mentality. Like if anybody scored on me, you know, if I didn't work out, you know, I mean, he was at me, like, you don't want to be great. You know, like he was like, <laughs> like he was on me, man. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize that in order to make it in, you know, at these top levels, like you have to have really somebody in your corner pushing you like that, man. And, you know, as tough as he was on me, you know, I'm extremely grateful for it because you know, I was able to live both of my dreams. Well, yeah. all three of them. I yeah. wanted to go to Ohio State, play in the NFL, and play professional baseball. And, you know, not every kid gets to gets to do that. So I'm extremely grateful for, you know, him, you know, picking me up to go work out. You know, like, man, such and such is probably out there working out, man. Like, you got to go work out. And, you know, he'll come get me and we'll go to the track. I remember one time, man, it was right after a baseball game. I still had the eye black on. <laughs> And we go over to the sports dome in Jackson. He's got me doing curve the curves and uh and strength shoes. <laughs> I remember do, the strength yeah, shoes. Yeah, like man. you gotta he's like, you gotta do ten of them. I'm like, man, like I just played, bro. I think I might have hit a home. I got balled out that day, like bro. Like, and I go home and chill, man. So but yeah, man. Between him and my mom, man, you know, obviously there were more people, you know, yeah. along the line, high school coaches, uh Forsh, you know, Coach Sheets, uh Denise. Wait, wait, Kansas. what coach did you have? Uh, Phil Forshee. Oh, you did? Someone yeah. literally um, at Mission Cafe, that's where I've been eating breakfast. Every, I, you know, I stopped going to McDonald's now. Mission Cafe, <laughs> Third Street, downtown Dover. <laughs> Pay me for that sponsorship. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but in there, literally, she, um, Renee, who goes to my church, she was like, hey, do you know who Phil Forshee is? Yeah. I was like, no, nah, let me see a picture. And I saw him. I was like, oh, yeah, I know who that is. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. You had him. That, that's crazy. I didn't put two and two together. She said Canton South. Yeah. But, um. That's crazy. So like, and he's a, like almost, like, he's like a legend though, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's a, he's a, far as baseball, man, like he just, he was just a great baseball coach, man. You know, he taught us uh, a lot of the, you know, the fundamentals and, you know, just, just a great overall role model, man. Like uh, the, that senior year at Kent South, man, was something that. I'll never forget on the football field, you know, Mo Daniska, you know, he brought it out, you know, we switched to the spread offense, you know, we had Jakeem, Devo, you know what I mean? Like Devo, it was just, yeah, Devo was a monster. You know I was I mean? afraid every play, like, man, this dude about to break it. <laughs> Come on, man. Like, and <laughs> Come then on, on the, defense. <laughs> yeah. And then on the uh, baseball hand, we meet Gill, you know, Lucas Murray, Nate Clark to be like, we just had a, a good senior year, man. And I just think it was just because the people out there in Kansas South, you know, the community, we had a lot of support. So, you know, I, I credit, you know, all of them, you know, my family, you know, and to, you know, instilling that work ethic in me, you know what I mean? They made sure I was, you know, on time for my ACT to get the driver's license, you know, ACT, just to. bro. It's yeah. crazy. You know what I mean? Like, like bro, it's tough. To, like, you got to. <laughs> oh, my bro, God. I took that mug three times, dude. I took it twice, and both times I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> bro, what? The lady's like five minutes left. I'm like, oh, oh, oh shoot, see, real quick. see, <laughs> see, see, bro. Man. Well, the one was after our rival game, week ten. I was like, why did I schedule this right, right now? Right. But 
But yeah, yeah they, you said they making sure you had you was on your P's and your Q's. Yeah, man. The one thing I noticed though, not only like okay, getting up early to work out, you know, your brother dragging you after post game. The and you talked about the ter- the termination and the drive your mom had, but the thing I noticed is you didn't care. And this is the thing I had an issue with. I always cared what people thought. Like I was always like, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't do this because of this or oh, I don't, you know, I don't want to look stupid in front of this person. You did not care. You were like, look. Y'all might think I'm crazy. Y'all might think this. I don't care. I'm doing this because I know it's going to work. And it was just, I think that's part of the reason you were able to, you know, play professional level at both sports, even though, like, that's that's obviously hard to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, But I guess we could talk about that. Like, how hard, Um, because I know a lot of college coaches told me, um, what's the the coach that was at Michigan State? He was at Cincinnati first. Uh Dang, I feel so disres- like I'm disrespecting him. You said the coach that was at, that he was at co- Cincinnati when we were coming up, and then he went to Michigan State. Uh, wasn't Antonio? No, yeah, was Antonio. The, yeah, Antonio. Was he told me straight up, "Look, that's going to be too hard for you to do in college. You can only play football here." And I'm like, "Dang, man!" And I yeah. really wanted to play both, so you know. And then I, you know, I <laughs> messed around, thought I was going to Ohio State, but that's the only reason the grudge I hold against Ohio State <laughs> because. <laughs> Them boys didn't recruit me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Devon, you could have said something like, trust all we need to get past. Right, like, no, y'all, had, y'all had freaking uh, Terrell Pryor. I mean, he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could have, man, you could have definitely played it all. But they told me they was like, hey, sure. you can walk on. And I just was like, they was like, we won't protect you the first year. And I'm like, James Lord is taking my head off every practice. Yeah. I don't know if I want to do that. Bro, yeah, bro. No, we didn't, even, bro, we didn't even hit in practice all like that. But man, really? I, yeah, no. Oh, they scared me. They didn't want Bro, when I, t- when, I t- when I talk to people, man, you know, about you and stuff like that, like, you know, everybody think they think about the, uh, oh, he made it for the Cleveland Indians. But like, bro, like, I remember those conversations, you know, going to, um, we had the showcase for the Cincinnati Reds. Oh, or yeah, the, yeah, yeah. One of the showcases we were at. Well, we, I think it was in since it was in Cincinnati. But it was for a lot of teams, though, right? Was it? Yeah, it was yeah. for all. It was for yeah. all the MLB teams. But I remember, you know, and you and Ben Jerry Vicious stayed at my house. Remember, Ben like walked up to me, bro. It was like, yeah, I'm staying at your house. I talked to your mom. I'm like, bro, who are you? Like, <laughs> it was the most random thing ever. And we uh, went to going to that team, whatever. But man, like I tell people all the time, like man, like Percy should have been on scholarship to play. You know. At any school you want to like, you literally had every Star County record at, for a quarterback. Like, how don't you get a scholarship, man? It's but, a, it's a, it's. A, I was a, a victim of the, of the the strategy, or what is it? The victim of the, um, like, oh, like everybody was going to the spread. So, yeah, 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 but they was like, yeah, he had all them past yards just because you know they passed every down. But what about the running backs to get the hand the ball handed to him every down? Like, right, right, <laughs> what, right, whatever. Product right. of the system. That's what I was trying right. to get to. I'm educated. I promise. Right, but yeah, man, definitely, <laughs> man. You could have you could have played there, man. So I um, wish you would have, man. It would have been it would have been dope, bro. I was gonna say I want to get to that. The culture of the Ohio State locker room. Not too many people hear about. Like, you know, at the pro level, grown man, you know, my locker mate was Trevor Bauer. Everybody knows this man. He's a clown on Twitter and stuff yeah. like that. But for real, I admire that dude. He just, he comes off uh, like maybe brash or maybe just like mean to a lot of people. But mm-hmm. to me, he just says what he thinks and he doesn't hold back because right. he feels that everybody else should do that. But like the culture in the Ohio State locker room, um, I mean, how was it? Because y'all was... What years did you play there? Oh, seven to eleven. To eleven, yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh. Like what? Like who was the leader? And like who was it? Was it Pryor? Was it? You know the defensive people. Like who? Did, who was like the guy that y'all turned to? And then what type of culture did he set up in the locker room? Man, um, there was there was. A, or was it more coach driven? This one. I mean, man, it was it was everybody, man. Really? I mean, just like. You know now, who was y'all's coach? No, uh, I'm joking. I'm nah, joking. Man, this guy, I can't believe. <laughs> <laughs> can't believe I was about to play uh, Jim Trussell. <laughs> no, nah, but uh, man, it was uh, I, you know, it was uh, it was everybody, man. I think at Ohio State, what what makes what separates us from every you know a lot of teams is our expectation level from the coaches to the players. Like we expect to win every single game. Losing isn't an option, you know, yeah, even though yeah. it's going to happen. But, you know, yeah, but losing yeah. isn't like we're not thinking about that. We're thinking who we're going to play in the, in the title. You yeah. know what I mean, in the national championship back that, at, at, at yeah, the time. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if you want to talk about just like individual like players, like, you know, Malcolm Jenkins, man, oh, was yeah, somebody yeah, yeah, yeah. who was a different breed, bro. Like <laughs> he was a dog, like, you know, and. And I want to talk about that. What do you, when you say a dog, just so everybody knows, mm-hmm. I know what you mean. Yeah. 
you know, but wh- like, what do you mean? Cause most people will think, you know, all oh, athletes, you know, they're tough, you know, but when you're a dog, that's just different. Yeah. It's just like, like you don't, like you said, you know, like, I don't care what anybody thinks. Like I'm about to go out here and, you know, just ball. Like, you know, he just, he was fearless. Yeah, you know, so it's, it's confidence. Yeah. You're not worried about messing up. Exactly. You just, you know that you're about to go out there and get yours. Like Dion always talks about it. Yeah. Hey, he a dog. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, this is what I took from Malcolm, man. You know, I, I, I learned, you know, he was my roommate during camp and like I ended up replacing him after he ended up going to the NFL and stuff, you know, so I got a chance to study him. But the thing that I took from him that stuck with me and helped me at Ohio State was, you know, if, you know, like he would, you know, I practice like, you know, you would go up against, he would go up against Brian Robisky, like that was his guy, him and Hartline. You know, when I was there, I'd go up against Devere, like if Robo would like catch a pass on him or something, like he was like, you won't do it again. And I'm like, bro, like you got beat. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but like he, you know what I'm saying? That was just mentality. And the yeah, next play, yeah, yeah. he literally come back and, you know, pick two interceptions off, like, you know, back to back or something crazy yeah. or, you know, make a nice PBU. So his, his mentality was that like he was never losing, even if you beat him. And to me, I think that's what that dog mentality you know, you For know, those who don't know, PBU is a uh, pass breakup. Yeah, okay. pass breakup. <laughs> you know, but it, you know, that was, that was, that was his, that was his mindset, man. And, you know, to me, that's why he's successful in the NFL. You know, what is he, you know, Jank is probably maybe 33, 34, yeah, you know, yeah. and still playing safety yeah. in the NFL, you know, two Super Bowls with the Saints and Eagles. I think he had two Super Bowls and with the two of the toughest defenses here in the last yep. decade. Yep. So, you know, it speaks volume to, his, you know, his mindset, that's not a coincidence, no, you know, sure. so, you know, definitely Malcolm Jenkins, James Laronitis was a, was another one in my early years at Ohio State, um, you know, it was, it was a lot of guys, man, that, that were there, Beanie Wells was, a, you oh, know, yeah, yeah, uh, for sure, for you know, sure. he was really, he really helped me out in my early years at Ohio State, and man, and I think, you know, guys had so much respect for Tress, that you didn't want to go out there and lose, man. Yeah, like you, sure. like you know, it's different. You know, you ever, you ever hear the term, you know, like a player's coach? Yeah. You know, to me, what that means is like that's a coach that, like, I'm going out here and winning for this dude because I care about, you know, about this guy. Yep. And that's how I was. You didn't want to, you know, disappoint him. Yeah. You know, so that's you know, I think he set the tone for a lot of us. I never seen. I seen Trestle yell a handful of times, man. But you really? knew. Oh man, you knew when he was like. For real. Like, <laughs> I remember one time he was in practice and I missed a block for Beanie, man. And like, oh, this he, is early years. This when he was is like receiver. freshman year. Like, and he came over there, like, he didn't say anything, but he just looked at me. And I was like, oh, yeah, I ain't missing no more. Right? Like, <laughs> like, just gave me like this look with a, like an eyebrow raise. Like, <laughs> That's like, never happened before, man. Like, I'd rather you yell at me, but, like, yeah. that's scary. Like, a coach just hits you with that. Don't say that. And then just, then just walks off, man. Like, hey, but th- when you talked about, you know, uh, Jank, when he would, uh, when he would, like, get beat and he would just still come back and be tenacious and not, like, get down, like, dang, I just got beat. Yeah. I noticed that, like, when I made, when I went on a visit and I saw Santonio Holmes going up against, was it Yabuti? I just like saying his name. I don't know if it was him, actually. But actually, yeah. <laughs> it might have been. But uh, them two were out of control, and, and Santonio handed it to him that day. But, like, you would not have been able to tell that. Yeah, if you just showed yeah. up for practice, at, like, after they went one-on-one, like, they didn't they didn't let the other team, other receivers or DBs go. Like, yeah, they, yeah, they that, that's what I like, mean. No, like, we going back again. I, was, I ain't yeah. never seen nothing like that. Yeah, and, I, man, I took, I took that from him, and it helped me, man, because really at Ohio State, man, like, I was an offensive guy. And I think, you know, some of my teammates would agree, you know, like, I really wanted to play offense, so me having to—that's one of my questions. Look at you leading right into it. <laughs> when I had to switch to defense, man, I was like, ah, oh. like, <laughs> man, I'll never forget coming home from uh, my 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 rookie year of minor league baseball and getting back to the uh, the the Ohio State uh, or getting back to the facility, going into the the wide receiver meeting room, and I'm look up, I see all the new incoming freshmen's pictures, Heartline, everybody. I look up, I'm like, dang, like. I'm like, oh, they just probably just didn't put it up because I ain't been here. <laughs> so I go look for the playbooks and like, I'm like, all right, can't find the playbook. I'm like, man, immediately like my wheels got to turn in, bro. Go to the team meet room to see where I'm sitting now. I'm looking on the offensive side, right? <laughs> looking like, oh, okay. nope, all right, nope. And as I like go to look at the defensive side, Tress comes walking, <laughs> walking down the hall. It's like, Devon, you're over there now. <laughs> I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, man, like. 
But man, like I had to, you know, I had to learn to be a cornerback. What was good, like you know, the PBU, yeah, yeah, how yeah. many interceptions was good. You know what I mean? So I had to learn. So I knew immediately that I had to look at who was the best and immediately emulate that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. literally, everything Jenk did, you know, how he, you know, lined up, press man, just whatever. I was trying just to copy, copy him. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was other guys that helped me out. Andre Amos was a fifth year senior at the time. Um, you know, Sean Lane, uh, Anderson Russell, you know what I mean? The list goes on. Yeah, we yeah, we yeah, had yeah. just a great secondary and my defensive backs coach, man, you know, really helped me out a lot too. That's so what's up. that's what's up. How was it playing against, uh, you know, I think you had some pass breakups against like USC, Miami, you know, Wisconsin, those type of people. I mean, obviously you probably dominated like Toledo and Akron all in school, but like <laughs> playing against USC, Miami and stuff like that. Getting up for those games, like, obviously, you probably didn't have to really get up for those games. Trust didn't have to probably give you a big speech. You guys are just, you know, you guys did that yourselves. But how was those games? Was it? Man, I'll tell you. So, my junior year, USC was the first was the first game I would start, man. And you want to talk about nervous, bro? <laughs> I think I remember that game because I remember the... The dude, the band member who dotted the eye, smacked the camera, dude. I, I remember that he was. He's like, "Watch out!" I was like, "Damn!" Even the band is out of control. Yeah, bro, man. And look, so you know, it was a night game, right? Like, yeah, had, like well, it was. It might have been ABC. I can't remember, but yeah. it was a prime game, college game days there. And you know, it's one thing to be on the sidelines. And like, <laughs> you hype, like, but you just like cheering on your like, team. Yeah, like, like, hey, you, go. you know, you ain't got to go in the game. So, like, you get beat for it. Like, it don't matter. Like, you hype, you know what I'm saying? Like, you cool. But to really know that, like, yo, you're about to be out here starting this game. And I remember being in the hotel room and we watched all the games, you know, throughout the day. You know, you have meetings. You yeah, know? yeah. And the whole day, dude, like, I'm just like nervous. Like, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, my stomach's dude, crazy, I miss bro. Those like, feelings. I ain't had it so long. I was like, oh, man. Like, bro, like, it's really about to go down, bro. Like, I think I bro, I think I think threw up, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you watching all these other dudes get beat for touchdowns. Like, I'm like, oh, man, please, God, no. Like, do not. Like, I'm not trying to be on sports center getting dunked on. Like, you know, they show the highlights of the dude catching the ball and, like, all of the camera, like, and you falling. Like, that's all I was envisioning, man. That's all I was envisioning, like, that day. But, you know, like, after literally, after the first snap, I go out there and, you know, like, the first play, like, I'm nervous. Like, I'm, like, literally, like, I can't feel my legs, man. Like, bro, it's dark. Like, it's, That's exactly you know, how it was when I was front. I felt like my torso was floating out to the mound. Yeah, but it was the weirdest <laughs> feeling. Like, I couldn't feel my leg. I was moving. But like, I, like I, couldn't, I couldn't feel them. And, like, it's dark. And you just got these bright lights just, like, right there, like, in your peripherals. And, then like, you just hear all the fans yelling. And literally, like, after the first play, like, I just kind of, like, ran and, like, jumped in the pile a little bit just to, like, shake the, <laughs> to shake the jitters off, man. And, um... Next series we come on, man, I get the sack against Matt Barkley mm. and my teammate Jamel Hines. Yeah, um, he was at seven, right? Yeah, comes over, man, like, you know, like, that's what I'm talking about, Devon. Like, you know what I'm saying, was getting me hype. And, like, from that point on, like, I was just cool, you know what I mean? Like, it was like, okay, like, I'm supposed to be out here. Like, I can play out here. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it sank in. I can man, relate to so, that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it was, a, it was a nervous moment, like, probably, like, the most nervous I've ever been, but... You know, that was probably, like, my favorite game. I ended up getting, like, defensive player of the game. Dang. You know what I mean? Like, That's and, what's up. Like, literally after that game, like, I went home, like, dang, like, I might be on my way to the league here. <laughs> like, like, I was out here balling, man, so. Well, that's the game that Boom Heron went up one-on-one -on -one with Taylor Mays, right? Yeah, bro, it won. <sighs> yes, I know. Right? I, was, I was like, he about to get bopped. Yeah. And, and I guess that's why I call him Boom. <laughs> boom. Yeah, bro. He, he like, looked like he was... You know, like a fake, like a created person. Right. He's probably, he probably one of the strongest, like, you know, uh, probably one of the strongest on the and team. And somehow he sure. ran like a 4 3 four, 4 as well. Like, what yeah. is that? I mean, bro, like, <laughs> when, I don't know. He, what boom, boom is extremely quick, man. So, like, you know, he would get out the break and just be, like, gone out of there. Like, uh, okay. maybe his top end probably wasn't, like, as but fast. But acceleration. But, like, but, yeah, his, you know, from A to B, like, right now, like, his 10 to 20 was, like, one of the fastest, I remember. Dang. You know, so, but, That's you know, he, he he was a hard worker, bro. And, I yeah, I remember that, bro. Like, it was, like, watching in a slow motion, too. Because, yeah. like, team, you know, Team A was a big dude, bro. Yeah. To see that, I was like, oh. like <laughs> I saw it happening. I was like, oh, let's go. <laughs> Yeah, man, that was, that, was a, that, was a, that was a good game, man. I was I went home after that game, like you know, this is it. Man. Let's go, baby. <laughs> oh, and I know you. Uh, you probably can't say much about this, but <laughs> let's just ask. So, obviously, I talked to you earlier. You were drafted by the Astros, sixteenth round in 07, straight out of high school. Uh, so, what would you do in that situation? <laughs> 
would you be like out in the media like bro something's going on like i just don't feel right or would you just shut up and take the ring <laughs> man like i would you know like I mean, that's no, a hard I mean, question I, to ask yeah it's a tough question to ask i mean, I like, mean to I, be honest i would take the ring i wouldn't be like because i'm not like a leader on the team you know and <laughs> i think that's for that's you just you know took the words right out of my mouth man like for me like you know i majority of teams man like i've always kind of been a leader from some in some capacity, I yeah. might not have been the guy, you know yeah. what I mean. But like I've always like you know had influence on my teams, and I'm gonna just be real, you know, with me, man. Like I just probably wouldn't have been wouldn't have been comfortable with it, yeah. you know. So I would have probably you know tried to say something. Well, that's why I asked you because I knew I know your mentality and how you like you just don't come off. You know, like obviously you work. We talked about your work that your work ethic, and you just you wasn't about you know gain an unfair advantage and just I knew it like your gamesmanship and how you would want to play like yeah. um I I think man you know so the reason why I say that's a tough one is because you know I you know I know I was teammates with Springer you know yeah. Altuve um and all those guys so like I seen Jose Altuve win you know we were both you know rookies and um he was smacking the ball over the fence then he's literally five seven <laughs> here I'm sitting like I'm six foot like I'm trying to figure out like man this guy so he was always good <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah, i mean yeah. so you know it's not like he like needed the advantage yeah, you know so yeah. like was there more of that going on and you know what i'm saying throughout the mlb or so, like I, I don't know yeah, you know what i'm saying but like i'd like to think you know what i'm saying like i just wouldn't you know be you know be down with that man yeah. it's, it's a it's a tough one because you know it's kind of like you know uh the white Sox back in the day or whatever uh, man it's yeah. like but, but i mean a lot of people are like well it happens all over the league and to be honest when you know, i was when i was with the indians and I was in the dugout sometimes. It's not like I was just sitting on the bullpen all the time, but like I don't, I there's no way that we were doing that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> see, like my thing is like this, like man, like obviously, you know, this is baseball, so you're trying to, you know, get some type of advantage. Mm-hmm. So it's it's one thing to you know be in the dugout and steal a sign, or you know, or just you, pick up something like maybe he opens pitcher. his glove or yeah, something. Yeah, you like know that. what I mean? Like you're picking up something on the pitcher, yo. When he does this, he's throwing his fastball, or yeah. you know, you see the catcher, you know, he rocks, and yeah. you know, what I mean, just pick up a sign like that. Or, you know, just, you know. Or looking straight at his fingers like, all right, change up, boom. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's one thing to get it like that, but to, you know, that other stuff. Well, some people are like, it's not that bad of an advantage. I'm like, bro. If everybody's doing it, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, I was like, Altuve is already a dog. And then he knows immediately, soon as, before the pitcher's windup is coming. Yeah. That when, when <laughs> like, come. Yeah, like, I, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, I, like, I want to compete. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to, you know, one of the people that I like is uh, Anderson. You know, Anderson. You Tim Anderson. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, from, for sure. Uh, I just saw him Chicago. flipping, yeah, flipping the bat on yeah, Instagram. You know what I mean? And all, <laughs> he gets a lot of slack for that, man. But you know, um, I'm not necessarily mad at you know him doing it. Like I, I will, don't flip the bat thirty feet in the air. You know what I mean? But if you if you smack something and you want to get hype, like I feel like that's your. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like this is competition. This is entertainment. Like enjoy it like don't be dogging the pitcher though i'm not with that i'm yeah, not like yeah. with like yo point at the pitcher like i beat you yeah, yeah but like if you were to strike me out bro and we're boys and you were to be like like yeah let's go like like all right like yeah like when you hit like, me on, when you hit me on the sideline yeah <laughs> you know what i mean like <laughs> i still uh to this day like man I uh. like it's competition it's competitive <laughs> sports like man let's compete let's have yeah. fun with this so and as a pitcher i never would get mad like if a dude like i'll be like i mean i'll be mad at myself for letting him do it like yeah, dang yeah. like if i would have did my job he wouldn't be able to do that but yeah that so same little cam newton doing his dance remember the titans get mad at him yeah. he said look if you want me to stop dancing don't let me in man you know what i mean <laughs> But you got you do have you do have to have some sportsmanship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why I say like you don't want to be like yo pointing your finger at the pitcher like yo I hit you out. You know what I'm saying yeah. staring at him as you're walking by. But like what I do with you know what I'm saying me in this moment like I earned this. Like I put my hard work in. I was yeah. in the you know what I'm saying like this is on me. Yeah. Like this ain't nothing. nothing, nothing. You know what I mean like so when I think Tim he he, he hit one he clipped one and he kind of like chucked his bat and was like talking to his teammates in the dugout and like yeah. they like were going crazy about it. You know what I mean? But I'm like man like. Like that's exciting to watch, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like you don't know, like how why that man hype like that? It's yeah. a struggle to get there, bro. We yeah. only make up what five six percent of the MLB, like you know what I mean? Like, and that's a whole nother, you yeah, know, you yeah, know, yeah. topic. But yeah. it's, so. it's a grind. But and then when you think about it, like there was just a clip of Belichick talking about, hey, like you guys, he basically just said exactly what you said because there's people talking about Cam, you know, and the Patriots don't dance and all that stuff. And I'm like, look. You know, I don't think Cam's gonna change. You no, know, we man. might see Belichick pull up in some Cam clothes for one of the, the 
in one of the press conferences. All right, we probably won't see that, but um, but uh, what like bef- before we get you know we wrap this up, I do want to ask you, and this is the the tough question, but you said you know it's gonna be straight. So how do you like? What was your take, and how did you feel? So I knew what type of athlete you were. I knew what you could run in the forty. When you went to the NFL Combine and ran the time that you ran, obviously you weren't expecting that. You talked about expectation. You had Ohio State. You weren't expecting to do what you did. Like, what was your mentality? I know growing up, you're always like, you know, I don't care. Like, I'm, you know, next thing I'm on, I'm moving on. But just knowing what you're capable of and then doing that, like, how did that affect you? I'll just have to see, like, so this man, you ran a 4-4, right, when you were getting timed, getting ready to get recruited for college. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean. We ain't got to say I the mean, time like, you man, ran. That was, it. you know, that, you know, I mean, it's all good, baby. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's, a, you know, like, that was a tough time for me, man. You know, because, like you said, I had, you know, worked my entire life more so for that moment than any baseball moment. Yeah, you know, yeah. We was playing baseball. We was having fun. Yeah, yeah. But Ohio State and NFL, those are my, you know, really my first dream. So for me to get to the NFL Combine, man, and have that performance, you know, it was, it was, it was a devastating blow, you know, at first. Yeah. And because I had never ran, you know. Before you say somehow slow, it, hey, <laughs> I, I ran. <laughs> I, you know, I don't even want to say the time, man. That's so crazy, bro. Like, but like just I did, I brought this up though Just to talk about Because not many people Even when it's going on They don't realize Like how much pressure Is on you yeah. You know But it it doesn't really matter Like if you look at Tom Brady He's probably the worst Looking NFL combine right, person right, In history right. But obviously He plays a different position Than you But like And I'm not a I'm not a good combine player Either When I did my Ohio State combine Like I My vertical was alright but, you know, I, I just did not want to run that 40. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it's it's a thing we got to do. You have a boy shaking. I right? know. I'm just like, man, do I got to run it? You want to watch me throw or yeah. what? <laughs> like, trying to get out of it. But, man, like, for me, yeah, man, that was a, that was a, that was a, that was a devastating time, man. Because, you know, I wouldn't, I knew for a fact, like, I could run a 4-4. Yeah. And I didn't, man. So, you know, at my pro day, uh, a couple of weeks later, I ended up turning around and uh, going four four eight. Um, really? Yeah. So I thought That's I had. Uh, I thought I had. Um, I think I, I ran to a four four eight and like a four five zero. Okay. I think something like that. Um, so I had made up for it in my mind. Yeah. But you know, when you're dealing with the NFL, bro, and these guys are coming and they're running four threes and four twos. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like I and my body of work was was cool. At Ohio State, like I had my interceptions, a pick yeah. six, you know what I'm saying? I had my plays. That pick six was against Penn State? Yeah. yeah you know yeah. what I mean? But it wasn't like I was just had crazy numbers out there, been starting for three years. You yeah. know what I mean? So, you know, I look at that, I and mean, after my pro day, okay, you know, the Browns came and worked me out, the Jets, um, and a couple of other teams along with Chim and Jamel, we all worked out at the same time. And, you know, I think really if I would have ran that 4 4 at the combine, like I would have went to Cleveland in the fifth round because they ended up taking Buster Scrine yeah. from, uh, I think it was Chattanooga. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But he went 4 2 at the combine. So that shows Damn. you right there that that's what matters. You know what I mean? Like I started at Ohio State. You know, he's obviously at a, a smaller university, but the times were different. Yeah. You know, I had big plays on this day. So all I really needed to do, man, was run my time. So, man, I struggled with that for a long time. And, you know, unfortunately, we had that lockout that year, too. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. But so you I, still were what? What you were, you did the Bengals, those Vikings. And you were talking about, eight, like, people could see your talent, obviously. Yeah, and yeah. You, I remember you telling me, um, Adrian Peterson was even saying, like, hey, bro, him or Brett Favre, like, look, you, you should be a part of this team. Obviously, they don't make the decisions. Yeah, yeah, but. <laughs> yeah. Eight, eight, man, that's a cool dude, good dude. Man, one of the most freakish athletes oh, yeah, yeah. I've ever seen, man. Like, it's sort probably, of like me and stuff, right? Bro, <laughs> <laughs> bro, between him, uh, TP, Terrell Pryor, uh, Antonio Camardi, Peterson, Adrian Peterson, and Beanie Wells are probably the most freakish athletes ever I've seen. Really? But Adrian, you know, he was cool, man. He was like, man, you keep making them plays, man. Like, you're going to make this team. You know, I was 29, I think. He was 28. So I sat next to him every day, and he was just, you know. Your football numbers. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's like, you know, just hey, keep it up, man. You know what I mean? Like, you're doing good. Like, you're going to make this team. And, I, you know, I thought I was, you yeah. know. Um, like, I was making plays. I picked off, uh, was picking off McNabb and Ponder in practice, you know what I mean, doing well. 
but unfortunately they drafted a corner in the fifth round. Yeah, you know I mean, and they you know they pay themselves. Of course, it's still going, politics no matter you know what, what level no matter, you go no matter to. what. And from there, I signed with Cincinnati, the Bengals. Uh, like with like three weeks left in the season. And I was like, man, like, okay, like, I'm good. Like, you know, Jeez. God was testing me a little bit. Like, I, I weathered the storm. Like, I'm going to sign in a, uh, an off-season program um, and, you know, come in balling. Because I really think if I would have had all the OTAs, yep. you know, summer workouts with the Vikings, that I would have been able to, you know, get the playbook down. Because, I mean, it took me two years to learn Ohio State's defense at Ohio State. You know what I mean? While yeah. I was there. So you imagine trying to come into an NFL, NFL training yeah. camp and get it in a month, <clears throat> you know. So, you know, I think if I would have been, I would have made that team. But, you know, after the Bengals, I ended up signing with the um, rookie camp with Carolina, I think. Okay. And I think I had the best professional performance in any camp there. You know, I was yeah. doing well, you know what I mean? Really well to the point where the other DBs was like, bro, like, what they say to you? They going to keep you? Like, they, like, <laughs> like, they, you know what I'm saying? Like, all right, that's how I know I did good when yeah, this yeah. cast is coming up to me. So, uh, who was the, uh, who's the corner that was there? Um, Norman? Yeah, yeah, Josh like, Norman. Yeah, he was there at the time. Um, they didn't end up keeping me. Then I uh, ended up signing with the Jets. Yep. And uh, two weeks into training camp, I'm doing well. I worked my way up to uh, on every special team, like, ball and making plays. I had a couple dudes mad at me because I was going full speed and uh, <laughs> and practice, but you know how it is, bro. Like this hey, special teams yes. is, you know, what I'm saying your way to That's how you you know get on the field. So yep. you know, what I mean, <laughs> I was going full speed. The one big linebacker was like, "Hey, like chill out, like." <laughs> and just, bro, the special teams coach came and, "Hey, man, just you know, calm down. We see you though. Good job." Like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, bet. So like, I was on every special team, man, and I was oh. guarding a. Uh, I forget who it was at the, at the time. It might have been Santonio. Uh, Santonio okay. Holmes, he was yeah, like, yeah, with yeah, me yeah. then. And, uh, you know, he came off the line of scrimmage and boop, boop. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like, like, got, like got around me and spun me around. And I had to hurry up and try and make up. <laughs> like, I, like, all you see is the ball coming down. He's about to catch it, bro. So I just, take this, <laughs> I just take this crazy jump, bro, in the air to try and knock the ball down, man. I ended up pulling up my hamstring, man. Uh. And I remember, like, you know, I, I never slam equipment and everything, bro, but that day, bro, like, they probably still looking for that helmet, bro, how far I threw it, man. I was so disgusted, man. But, said disgusted. Because I was in, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, this is my third team or a fourth team in a year. Like, you know, you don't get too many opportunities yeah. like that. So I'm just trying to capitalize them, you know, capitalize on it as best I could and for that to happen and then end up getting, you know, sent back home. Yeah. And you know that was it. I think I went up to the CFL for a second, man. But you know that was like I was up there for like a couple of weeks and ended up coming back. So and then I think at that point, man, it just really hit me like you know everything happens for a reason. And you know I think God really wanted me to focus on baseball. And so you know that's what I had been trying to do. But it was tough, you know, with my age. Yeah. You know because. 25 you're old that's old in baseball trying, you know what I'm saying yeah. trying, to be trying to get into baseball because they got 16 to 20 year old 21 year olds the Dominican the, Republic yeah. throwing 95 and switch it and like <laughs> bro like what do we need you for like you know what I mean like and so um, yeah man I, you know it, it, was, it was it was tough to try and get back in there so you know I just was staying diligent with it trying to find a way and last year I signed with the uh, Lancaster Barnstormers the Atlantic League man and shout out to um you know, my manager there, Ross Peoples, man, just a great Christian dude, man. Like, you know, he did more for me um, on, you know, just a, a, a spiritual level and just, you know, outside of baseball because he showed me that, you know, there are people that just really just believe in you and want to give you a chance yeah. and want to see you do well, man, because, you know, I hadn't played in a while, you know, yeah. so, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I'm up here trying to hit left-handed, like, these boys are <laughs> throwing hard, like, he <laughs> facing this dude that pitching the bigs last year. And, you know, I was struggling at first. And I remember we're playing against the Somerset Patriots, bro, and the game's on the line, right? It's a runner on second, I think, you know what I'm saying? And a boss hits me, and I'm in left field on the line drive, bro. He smoked it, too. And the grass is like that thing, so the ball's, like, going like this. <laughs> so I come charging the ball all fast, bro. The ball runs, rolls underneath my glove all the way to the backstop, man. And, like, I just hear everybody go, oh, <laughs> So, like, I immediately, like, did that just happen, bro? Like, go chase the ball, try and throw it in, they score. We end up losing the game. But, like, I'm like, oh, he's about to release me, man. Like, it was early in the season. Like, oh, this dude, damn got it. He's just fast. Like, but, you know, none of my teammates were mad. You know, I had some good guys. Uh, Tardos, Joe Tardosovich, Caleb Gindel, 
um, Casey Hobbs, just some great Dustin Hood, you know, oh, just yeah, some, Dustin. him says my boy, just some great dudes on my team who was like, man, don't worry about it. And then Ross came up to me, man, was like, hey man, that happens all the time. Like, don't worry about it. And then he stuck with me all throughout the season. And the fact that he believed in me, you know what I'm saying? It, I've always ne- believed in myself. Yeah, yeah, I never yeah. really needed that, but for you me know, to get that, that finally, you know what I mean? Like, just just like, all right. And I started grooving towards yeah. the end of the season, started starting Hitting a couple homers, like that's I'm like, okay, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, you know, that's been the that's been the <clears> journey <throat> so far, man. And you know That's what's up. That's what's up. Hoping the Lord continues to bless me, man. I'm trying to get to the big leagues like you, dog. Shoot. <laughs> These should have been there longer, dog. <laughs> no. But uh, right before we leave, just one tip for someone with the same dreams as you, uh, you know, wanting to play professional uh professional sports. What what one tip could you give uh a young Devon Torrance? A young Devon Torrance, man. Um, first and foremost, man, is work your faith. You know what I mean? Keep God, you know, first. You know, um, you're going to stumble. You're not going to be perfect. You're going to be frustrated with some time, with him sometimes. You're going to be like, man, like, what's going on? Like, why, why, why? But at the end of the day, I think that's what's kept me and what is keeping me. You know, his protection, his love, you know, his mercy and his grace, man. Um, that is the first and foremost I would tell any young athlete is, you know, tap into your faith. Um, you know, listen to your parents, you know, if you got it's hard, man. Yeah. <laughs> if you got a, if you got a, if you got a dad or, you know, he's trying to coach you up, you know, listen to him, regardless of sports, they're going to help you be successful. Um, and just develop a work ethic, man. And like you said, how I was, you know, just don't care about any, what anybody thinks, man. You know, um, there's going to be teachers, there's going to be people and say that, man, you can't do it. You know, you, it's 1% of people make it to the pros and, you hear all those things, but man, I think your belief in which in yourself is what, you know, helps you make it. And, mm-hmm. you know, I'm big on, you know, I, I, you know, I read my Bible and stuff. And one of my favorite Bible verses is uh, Proverbs 18, 21. You know, okay. I actually have a tattoo. It is uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue and um, they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And what that means is just, you know, you want to speak positivity, mm-hmm. you know, over yourself, you know, you want to speak success over your life you know so for me regardless of what anybody would say i would say to myself like i'm gonna make it to the pros like i'm going to ohio state like i'm going to the nfl i'm going to the mlb and when you tell yourself that and you make yourself you be- you believe it you know because it's like if i told you like hey man like hey, this podcast is dope you know what i mean you're gonna believe it so imagine if you you're telling yourself that and you yeah. that's all you need. You know what I mean? So Because most people are their own biggest critic. Exactly. Yeah. So you know what I mean? Being being positive with yourself, speaking, you know, positive words over yourself, man. And, you know, surround yourself with good people. You know what I mean? Like you're one of my, you know, best friends. You know what I mean? Like you'll be at my wedding, you know, one day. Let's go. Um, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> like surround yourself with good people, good friends, man, that are like minded, you know, have the same type of goals and dreams. True. You know, as Big. you man, and you know, I think I think if you do that and develop just a unbelievable, you know, work ethic, you know, where every day, like I'm trying to do something to get better, whether it's you know just jogging, whether it's you know taking some BP, whether it's long tossing, whether it's studying film, you know, I'm always trying to get better. I'm always trying to find that edge that I can to uh, be smart and be proactive, you know, for high school kids out there, you know, parents, you know, um, yeah, don't wait on the coach. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, you're trying to get your kid to, you know, get recruited and stuff like that. Go to these universities, be proactive, get out to these camps, get out to these coaches, you know, get out, get a hitting coach, a, a receivers coach, a quarterbacks coach. Like, you know, if I was a parent and I was looking at it, like it's an investment because, you know, that's what my mom would tell me. She would always make sure I had the best gloves and bats and everything. And I would feel bad because, you know, we didn't, you know, come yeah. from much. But she was, you know, she told me, she was like, you know, it's an investment. You want to go to Ohio State, right? You know, you're going to get a guy to get a scholarship. And that's how you have to look at it. So the 350 the $250, the $100 you're going to spend on a bat, a glove, or a camp, you're getting that back. You know yeah. what I mean? And your, son, your kid or son or daughter is getting a, a college education, you know, and those memories that you create with each other, you know what I mean? Are the most important thing anyways. You know yeah, what I mean? If you're trying to go to Ohio State in year 2030, it might be 150,000 by then. So, yeah, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> you know, you create a, you know, a lot of memories with that. But, man, so, yeah, that would be my advice, man, is, you know, keep God first, man, and just develop a great work ethic and, you know, surround yourself with good people. That's what's up. Well, that's Devon Torrance, everybody. I appreciate you coming. 
Make sure y'all subscribe. Remember, 76% of y'all ain't subscribed. So do it now. Like, do it. <laughs> and for y'all listening on iTunes, leave me a five star rating now. Say I'm the best. All right. Um, but no, we'll be back again Tuesday. Uh, we got another special guest coming up next Tuesday. And, uh, you know, tune in, listen. And uh, hopefully I'm inspiring somebody out there. You know what I'm saying? And uh, my homie made fun of something I say all the time. I can't remember what it is. But uh, <laughs> but no, until next time, I'll holla. <laughs>